delights. Let us pray. Lord our God, may we always give due honor to the sacramental presence of the Lamb who was slain for us. May our faith be rewarded by the vision of his glory, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray together the divine praises on the last page of the Missal at on the bottom. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus the most holy sacrament. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies exult over me, and let none who hope in you be put to shame. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess, Almighty God, to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I admit, bless Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that, gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The children may come forward for the children's liturgy of the word. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and Judah. In those days, in that time, I will raise up for David a just shoe. He shall do what is right and just in the land. In those days, Judah shall be safe and Jerusalem shall dwell secure. This is what they shall call her, the Lord our justice, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Toward those 
who keep his covenants and his decrees. The friendship of the Lord is with those who fear him and his covenant for their instruction. of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we have for you, so as to strengthen your hearts to be blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his holy ones. Amen. Finally, Brothers and sisters, we earnestly ask and exhort you and the Lord Jesus that as you received from us how you should conduct yourselves to please God. And as you are conducting yourselves, you do so even more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. The word of the Lord. disciples there will be signs in the sun the moon and the stars and on earth nations will be in dismay perplexed by the roaring of the sea and the waves people will die of fright in anticipation of what is coming upon the world for the powers of the heavens will be shaken and then they will see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory but when these signs begin to happen, stand erect and raise your heads, because your redemption is at hand. Beware that your hearts do not become drowsy from carousing and drunkenness and the anxieties of life. And that day catch you by surprise like a trap. For that day will assault everyone who lives on the face of the earth. Be vigilant at all times and pray that you have the strength to escape the tribulations that are imminent and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Jesus Christ. To you, O oh Lord, I lift my soul and wait all the day. Those words really set the tone for us in this season of Advent. 
We live in a very fast-moving society that has very little patience with delay and waiting. We're used to rush orders, fast food, instant pudding, and instant communication. Most people seem to be in a hurry. Time-saving devices are highly valued, and workers are often expected to keep up with fast-moving assembly lines. Traffic jams and the resulting delays can lead to violent outbursts of anger. In our culture, waiting does not sit well with people. It is constant activity and getting things done and done quickly that are prized the most. In this context, how do we then approach the season of Advent that proposes several weeks of waiting in preparation for Christmas? We are all being bombarded every day with messages telling us to hurry because there are only so many shopping days to Christmas remaining. Being under this pressure from the powerful and persuasive modern media, how then do we convince ourselves of the redemptive value of waiting? Has Advent waiting become merely lip service to a long abandoned practice for most of us? Advent is one of those times when it can seem that the church lives in one place different from the world out there. And if we think about it, it brings home to us the fact that many Catholics, many Christians, have divided loyalties. One foot in the world, so to speak, and one foot in the realm of the spirit. And so are we supposed to go through life then trying to balance this tension? I don't think so. You see, it's not as if the world was here and the church here, because the truth is, the church is in the world. And the truth of the gospel is meant to shed light on the meaning of our experience. And the values of the gospel are meant to provide a guideline for our daily living in the world. Our faith should not make us divided persons, but rather should be a source of inner unity and strength that brings together what we experience and what we believe. Our culture today is inviting us to impose a pattern on the emptiness of our lives by filling that emptiness with shopping. And isn't it true that it has been very successful in distracting us from giving much more than lip service to the Advent spirit of waiting? In our society today, many, peop many people's lives hover on the edge of meaninglessness. Much more time is occupied with issues having to do with material success. A better lifestyle, a better car, a better vacation. How to be number one. Issues that can never satisfy us in the long term. Rather than spiritual issues like developing a deeper relationship with God. Concern for others. Respect for human life in all its stages, a deeper prayer life. What the season of Advent is really about is an invitation to listen to the gospel's challenge to reorient the direction of our lives, to make a new beginning as we begin a new church year. And that is perhaps why the opposition between gospel and culture stands out in such a very visible way as Advent begins. The fact is, there will never be peace between the spirit of the gospel and the over-commercialization of Advent. 
We are talking really about some basic issues that all of us as Catholics have to face, such as are we looking for what Dietrich Bonhoeffer calls cheap grace, religion at a discount, or are we willing to be challenged by the price of discipleship? Jesus tells us in the gospel that we just heard, these are tough words, but they are his words. He says, beware that your hearts do not become drowsy from carousing and drunkenness and the anxieties of daily life. Be vigilant at all times and pray that you have the strength to stand before the Son of Man. It is a rather frightening message about our accountability for what we do with our time. It's a reminder for all of us that a day will come when we will have to review it all in the light of the gospel and God's judgment. So, is it possible that now, today, that waiting for the Messiah can begin to take priority in our lives? That growing spiritually can begin to mean something more than it has to us, perhaps in the past? That we can let go of some things that are really not important? Prayer, scripture, spending more time with the family, visiting the sick and the lonely, cultivating a simpler lifestyle, setting down our cell phones once in a while and looking into each other's eyes as we carry on a conversation. These are just some of the ways to express the fact that we are waiting and longing for the blessings of the coming of Jesus. And to accept that message, we may have to make a conscious break with some of the media messages we are hearing today. After all, the peace and joy of the gospel do come at a price. in our dear Father's love and providence, let us bring to him the following prayers. That this season of vigil may find all of us and the church drawn to prayer and penance, we pray. 
Lord, hear our prayer. That all world leaders may realize that the destiny of nations is in God's control, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That God's grace may touch hearts hardened by the cares of life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may look to the future, not in fear, but in hope and confidence, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially Leo Werfel, Mindy Bittner, Lauren Corneliuson, Larry Davis, Cecilia, Cecilia Pearson, Shannon Lopez, Jackie Stewart, Keith Barish, and Gail Carroll, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Lisa Sandoval, and Vera Kurilovic, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear Father in heaven, please hear these prayers and those that we hold in our hearts. We recognize that we are not worthy of any of your benefactions, but we are grateful nonetheless. Please hear our prayers and grant them through your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. Except we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god through christ our lord for he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and open for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the death of Lord until you come again. 
the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray, for even now as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Amen. Next Saturday is the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. It's Holy Day of Obligation. We have Mass on Friday evening and Saturday in the morning. Now you have to go to two Masses. We don't have any two-for-one deals going here. So take the bulletin and post it. Uh, if you can't make Mass here, I mean, maybe you work and there's a church close to where you are. Then uh, we have a sale on Christian next garbs uh, after Mass. This is next weekend. They're, they've been sprinkled with holy water. You can, uh, on your way out next week at, at weekend at Mass, you can purchase one or more, and the proceeds go to the church. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, in peace. Thanks be to God.